Hello and welcome to another complete Cambridge IGCS EPE lesson. The fourth topic in Chapter 10, Sponsorship. As always, we'll cover absolutely everything you need to know for your exam, and today you need to be able to identify the different forms sponsorship can take, describe the role that sponsorship plays in sport, and explain the advantages and disadvantages of sponsorship in sport. Professional sport relies on income to pay the wages of athletes and employees, develop and maintain facilities such as stadia and training grounds, and to provide financial rewards for shareholders. Income is generated in numerous ways, including the sale of tickets and merchandise, and media companies paying for the rights to broadcast sporting events. However, sponsorship has now become one of the main sources of the investment required by sport. So what is sponsorship? Put simply, sponsorship is the support given to a sport, sports event or organisation by an outside body or person for the mutual benefit of both parties. It's a commercial deal where a business provides support for a team, athlete or event in exchange for the opportunity to advertise their brand and in doing so increase sales and revenue. Sponsorship can take three main forms and the first is finance. Funding from a sponsor can help to pay for the daily living and training costs of performers and in return the performers will need to promote the business by wearing branded sportswear during competitions and interviews and may be required to feature in advertisements. Sponsors may also provide support in the form of clothing, footwear and equipment. For example, Nike and Wilson provide Roger Federer with their best kit for free in exchange for huge public exposure. Finally, sponsors fund or partially fund facilities. For example, airline brand Emirates paid Arsenal Football Club somewhere in the region of $200 million to name their team's stadium in London. As a result, Arsenal were able to afford a top-class facility, while Emirates enhanced their brand image by forming a positive association with a popular and respected institution. Sponsorship has evidently benefited sport in many different ways, but unfortunately their influence isn't always so positive. You need to be able to describe the advantages and disadvantages of sponsorship on the different parties involved, so we'll take some time now to work through the list. The first party we'll look at is the sponsor itself. Being linked to successful sports performers can improve the public image of companies, while displaying the brand helps to increase sales through advertising. Sponsorship money is also generally tax-free, allowing sponsors to reduce their tax outlay. In some cases, however, performers can become negative role models by using performance-enhancing drugs or behaving poorly during competition. This could of course damage the image and consequently the sales figures of the sponsor. Performers also benefit from sponsorship as it allows them to train and compete full-time. Without this funding, many athletes would need to work regular jobs to support themselves, which could have a negative impact on the quantity and quality of their training. Performers also receive the very best clothing and equipment through sponsors and have the chance to become extremely wealthy, which is something that may not have been possible prior to the sponsorship era. On the other hand, support may be withdrawn if an athlete's image is damaged and sponsors occasionally go bankrupt, which would cause financial difficulties for the performer or organisation. Finally, sponsorship deals usually require athletes to perform extra duties like featuring in adverts, which could have a significant impact on their training schedule. The next party affected is the sport itself. On the plus side, the injection of money into sport can help to develop the standards of coaching and facilities, leading to an improvement in the overall quality of performance. Funding may also be allocated to community schemes and promotional events, which could increase participation numbers. However, pressure from sponsors can lead to changes in the rules of a sport, for example, the introduction of video referees in rugby, which can interfere with the flow of the game. In addition, sponsors tend to prefer high-profile sports such as football to promote their brands, meaning minority sports find it difficult to find sponsors. The final party affected is the audience. Sponsorship money can be used to improve spectator facilities such as Stadia, which would give the audience an improved viewing experience. Big sponsors can also help to raise the profile of a sport, which would lead to an increase in media coverage, meaning more people can follow the action from home. Televised sport may be costly for the audience, however, as sponsorship deals with media companies may mean that coverage changes from free to pay-per-view. 
In addition, the timings of games may change due to sponsors wanting prime time exposure, which could be inconvenient for spectators. Now you've just covered everything you need to know on topic 10.4, sponsorship. If you'd like to practice applying what you've learned, you can find a link to every Cambridge Pass paper down in the description. As always, I hope you found this lesson useful, and I'll see you in the next one.